Welcome. Today we're gonna throw something big. And yeah, I know last week I said we're gonna throw something big as well, but we only did only did five kilo of clay. And I know to a lot of you, and it was to me not that long ago, a lot of clay to throw. But today I'm gonna go much bigger. If I sound a little bit nervous, it's because I am, because I'm gonna do something I never done before. I'm gonna throw more clay on the wheel than I ever done before. So I'm really setting myself up for failure. So if you are one of the evil people that enjoy watching someone fail, you know, this is the right video for you. Well, maybe I won't fail, who knows? The thing is, if you don't practice, if you don't challenge yourself, you're never going to get better. And today, for sure, I am going to challenge myself a lot. So, welcome. So this week, I'm going to try something that I haven't tried before. I'm gonna throw a bigger chunk of clay than I ever did. I've been throwing a lot of five kilos, I've been throwing a lot of 10 kilos, maybe a little bit more, but I never went really a lot over that. And as we talked about uh, last week, um, the problem with throwing a lot of clay at one time is well, basically a couple of things. One of them, of course, is to center all that clay, and before that, even to wedge all that clay. Um, but to center, uh, 10, 15, 20 kilo of clay is a challenge, but I'm going to show you some tips on, on how you can actually do that without putting too much uh, uh, burden on your, on your, on your body and, and something that, that most people will be able to do. But once you have that uh, big clay ball centered, pulling all that clay uh, to a decent height is also very difficult. Uh, what I found is that uh, the more clay you have, the higher you want to go. The, the weight of the clay in the top will kind of, of, of bring down the size. So even if you try to pull as much as you can, you can't really get it high enough. I will be throwing um, about, I have it yet, uh, about uh, 18 kilo um, of clay. Um, and this is, um, well, now you can't almost see me, but I'm still here. This is a reclaimed uh, clay, which <laughs> is not going to make my life any more easy because it is a little less consistent. Um, particles are not so well aligned and so, but it's a nice uh, mix of uh, stoneware clays that uh, has been sitting there for, for seven weeks, actually a few months, so it's, it's settled in and that should be good. Um, so the first challenge here is to wedge it. So let's go ahead and do that. Wedging. 17, 18 kilo of clay in one ball is close to impossible. I, I know people who can do it. I'm not one of them. <laughs> also, if you would have to wedge all that clay, I mean, <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of strength. I don't have that. So uh, another good method is called cut and slam. It's a very efficient way of wedging really big clay balls, a lot of clay, and it doesn't actually take that much strength. This is a very good tip for you. Also, I'm not gonna wedge all of it at once. I'm gonna take it into these three uh, balls that I have uh, showed you, and I'm gonna make each of them. And I'm also gonna divide it into clay balls of a size of about four, five kilo each. Because centering four and five kilo is much, much easier than centering 10, 20 kilo of clay. I'm going to show you how you can, you can gradually center just one ball first, and then you slap the next one on, and then the second ball, and so on. It's a much easier way to center all that clay. But first, let's start wedging. First, I take this ball and slam it a few times so I get a little wider um, ball to, to play with. You see, I'm not actually, I'm just lifting the clay and then I let it go. 
So I'm not actually slamming much because it's so heavy. This is about seven kilo. Um, so I'm using gravity as a force and just letting it fall. As I said, this clay is a reclaim. So it's not as consistent as uh, an even and uh, like, like a commercial clay that I usually get. It's very well uh, mixed when I get it. Uh, there's air bubbles in this and, and the different clay types are, are not completely well distributed in this uh, clay ball. So unlike some of the clay I get from Germany, we do need to wedge this. So um, the method of cut and slam is basically when you have this um, this piece, you cut it, you put the two pieces together. And so instead of having one layer, you then have two layers. Then you slam it, so you reduce the size and get air bubble pressed iron. You cut it again and you put those two pieces on top of the other two. Now you have four layers. You slam it again to compress it, cut it, put that on top. So now we have four plus four, eight. Compress it again, slam it, cut it, and then you have 16. And for anyone that knows the mathematical logic of, uh, uh, of, of, of doing that, you have a very exponential curve. So within just 10 cuts and slams, you actually have more than a thousand layers. And that makes it very, very even. So let's try and do that. If you look at this, it's actually not too bad, but you can see there's some uh, different colors here. There's some air bubbles and it's definitely not ready to throw. So we cut it like this, slam it down. And now you can see this is one piece, this is the second piece, so we cut it like this. One of the challenges in um, cutting, cut and slam uh, wedging is that if it's a big clay ball and it's uh, sort of a little bit on the wet side, it can sort of stick to your wedging bed when you throw it down. And then it can be difficult to lift up, especially if you try to lift it up like this. But a true good trick for that is to sort of roll it off. So like this, just roll it off. Because you can see now it actually sticks. I can't almost lift it. But it's very easy to roll it off. Then you don't need to use so much force. Roll. Now you can see the clay looks much more consistent. There's no air bubbles and the color variations have more or less evened out. So um, I gave it about 10 cotton slams. So that gives me more than a thousand layers. So I think that's ready for throwing. So I'll do the other 10 kilo <laughs> um, and then get ready for the wheel. This is the last ball. I feel kind of sweaty because even though I don't actually have to wedge it as such, I uh, still have to lift all that clay and I, and I uh, cut and slammed uh, almost 20 kilo of clay now, so <laughs> yeah, I feel a little bit sweaty. That was my workout for today. So for each of the balls, I'm gonna 
make them a nice cone and then I'm gonna gonna round it off at the bottom like this so we get this sort of a bit of a cone shape because then when I slam them on top of each other that's gonna uh, even out and because it hits here first and then distribute out we're gonna uh, avoid getting uh, air traps um, between the different clay balls that's very important because now we did all this work of getting rid of air bubbles so we don't want to introduce new ones so that's it when you're throwing really big things and you're throwing on uh, bats as i do one of the problems can be that when you're pulling all that clay up the bat lifts itself out of the pins so to sort of um, help with that i'm using this uh, bat mate it's called it's just a piece of like soft rubber ish thing uh, you wet it like this and uh, then you put it on your bat or on your wheel head <laughs> um, underneath the bat and it sort of helps the bat glue uh, to the wheel um, I think maybe you could also just use some clay but this is just very convenient and it's, it's not very expensive um, so then you put the bat on top of that let me see if I can find the holes here yep yeah. And now it helps also if the bat becomes a little bit uneven, then it won't uh, wobble. And uh, now it's, it sticks a little better. You could also put some dry uh, clay in the holes if, if you have a problem, but this way it's more secured. There are basically two ways that you can throw big pots. One way is to do sexual throwing, and I've been covering that very little in past videos. I'll probably do more of that, where you throw uh, smaller sections and you throw another section put on top of that and you sort of mix them together and then you you can build multiple sections that's actually the easiest way I think to do big things but there's also an interesting challenge in just putting more clay on your wheel and throw that so that's what we're going to do today and I am as I mentioned <laughs> gonna try and throw more clay than I ever did before is it gonna fail I don't know. Is it going to be fun? Hell yeah. If you're throwing something big, or actually any kind of throwing, it's always a good idea to sort of plan a little bit ahead on, um, on what kind of shape you're aiming for. I mean, of course, when you're throwing, you can, you can still, you know, change the shape. And sometimes, I mean, if you're not a very good thrower, like me, <laughs> I'm not a very good thrower, but uh, sometimes the clay wants to do what the clay wants to do. You end up with something a little bit different than what you aim for. There's still certain things that are difficult to change. For example, the width of the foot. I mean, you can somehow, you can, you can make it more narrow, but if you want to make it considerably wider, when you already uh, pull the clay, that's sort of difficult to do well. So it's always a good idea to kind of set up the base of your, of your clay. I'm aiming for a shape sort of like this, so not very wide, um, but more like a, I don't know uh, what it's called, but, but not a super narrow foot because it is going to be tall, it's going to be heavy, um, and then going out a little bit and going in again. Also, this will have very thick walls. And it's not just because I can't pull it very thin, but for a big pot, they will always be bigger, uh, thicker. But also because I'm gonna carve into the clay and make these uh, interesting uh, textures. And to do that, of course, you need a wall. It's probably gonna be a couple centimeters, maybe even more. Let's see. As always, I'm gonna try and do a cylinder first, and then I'm gonna do the shaping afterwards. But now we need to send. This is the biggest chunk of clay and also the one that feels most uh, dry. It's, it's not dry at all, but it, it feels most dry. When you want to throw something really big, it's in one way easier if it's soft, uh, because moving around that much clay is difficult if it's too, um, too dry or too hot. Um, on the other hand, if it's very soft, it'll be difficult to um, to stabilize it when you're pulling. So this is on the soft side. It is reclaimed, as I said, which is just gonna make my life even more difficult today. <laughs> so I'm gonna try anyway. So I'm gonna try and see if I can send this. And first, as always, I'm gonna clap send it. The more sender I can make it without actually throwing, the easy it's gonna be. C. 
see, it's already almost centered. So, So now it's pretty well centered. It was a little harder than I expected. I think it's a little more stiff than, um, than what I was hoping for. On the other hand, this is the base, uh, so it needs to be strong and um, it definitely is. So I think this was about maybe a little more than six kilo. Um, and um, so now to prepare adding the second um, ball of clay, I'm gonna make sure that this is uh, completely smooth. I'm actually gonna use a whip. I'm just gonna scrape off any slip here. Because if there's any slip here, that can um, lead to some, um, some air bubbles when we, um, when we throw the two pieces together. So now we have a completely smooth top and it's just a little bit coned. So when we take the other part, it's also coned, they're gonna extract and hopefully escape all the um, all air um, bubbles that might be. This also have this cone shape opposite to this one. So now I'm gonna try and put it on the center here, like this. And this way it should escape all the air bubbles, I hope. And again, I'm going to slap it into place to begin with. And now to begin with, I'm actually not going to touch the lower part. That's pretty well centered and it's rock solid here. So I'm just going to be focusing on the top. If I'm beginning to sound a little bit out of breath, that's because I am. <laughs> it is a lot of work moving around this much clay, but it's fun. And I can save my subscription on the fitness club, so it's all good. Now we have the two balls uh, glued together and I think it went pretty well. It's still very centered and I think we have 12 kilo here, maybe 11, 12 kilo, but that's not enough. We're gonna add another one. But before I do that, I'm still gonna even out the top, scrape off all the slip so um, we can get perfect gluing of the two. So again, the lower part is now uh, about 11, 12 kilo, so it's very solid. And I'm just trying not to touch that too much to begin with. Just gonna focus on centering the top, and then I'm gonna mm, well, um, throw them together into one consistent ball in the end. And as you may notice, I do have quite a high speed, but it's not like super high because now there's so much clay on the wheel um, and don't want to risk losing it, throwing it around. <laughs> it's a lot of kilos that are circling around. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's still pretty well centered, I think. Um, and now we have, I think it's about 15, maybe 16 kilo. I never had that much clay on my wheel. And that's another good reason why I love my wheel so much. It's a symbol and it's very strong. It doesn't show any signs of, 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 of weakness, any signs of not being able to handle this much clay. I think I could probably do three times more. Oh, I, I probably couldn't do three times more, but I think the wheel would be able to. So, But this is only 15, 16 kilo. Should we add one more? I have one more ball clay, so I think we should add one more. <laughs> Going crazy today. I know, I know, but um, why not? So I'm just gonna prepare the top again. This last ball of clay seems so little now. <laughs> it's probably something like three, three and a half kilo. So it's the smallest one of the four balls. So that's gonna be easy. There's almost 20 kilo of clay, and uh, of course I removed a little bit of slip, but it's very little, just a few hundred grams maybe. So most of the clay is on the wheel, and I think it looks pretty well centered, uh, don't you? Oh, you can make a comment if you think it's terrible, but or you can leave a comment if you think it's amazing. <laughs> After a short break, I had to take a little break. Um, I'm back again and I'm ready to open the clay ball and uh, start pulling it. And this may be a good uh, time to, um, to talk a little bit about the fact that when you're dealing with a big uh, ball of clay like this, you can actually take it very slow. You can ex extend the throwing over many hours, even several days. This is something I learned at a workshop uh, that I went to with one of Denmark's finest potters and also known for very big pots uh, over Wurz, um, that also do amazing glaze work. You have to go and check out his stuff. I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, not only did he spend a lot of time throwing, but he also left it, uh, put it aside and dried a little bit and came back and thrown some more. And he even put aside a, a, a pot and put it on the wheel again next day and continued throwing. And I was like, oh, can you actually keep throwing for so long time? And yes, because it is such a thick layer of clay, it doesn't dry fast. And this is even on the soft side. So I'm not even sure I'm gonna finish it today I'm going to start pulling. I'm going to do it slowly because I, if I push too much, I'm just going to push it out of shape and I definitely don't want that. I'm going to start out as I usually do with my thumbs, but of course <laughs> with this kind of, kind of clay, I'm not going to get uh, very far. Also, I'm just going to measure for the front of it. This uh, clay ball, which is, I mean, we haven't even started opening it or anything else. It's, uh, what is it? It's 20... 24, 25 centimeter. <laughs> and so this is this is before we even started opening a pulling. It's 25 centimeter. To many of you, 25 centimeter would be a big pot, but this is not a pot yet. So I'm just gonna use my thumb. Of course, I won't be able to reach down very far with just my thumbs. So I'm gonna continue. Uh, my hands, all fingers, and I'm gonna use this hand as a, a, a pressure in, so I don't push it out of shape. And it's gonna take some time <laughs> to work my way all the way down to the bottom of this uh, big clay ball. Just take your time, there's no rush, it's not gonna go away. And I'm trying not to scrape too much off because, I mean, I want all the clay, as much of the clay to stay in the pot, but some of it will. What I found is that the more clay you're throwing, the more clay you're throwing away. <laughs> so if you throw 10 kilos, uh, it's probably not gonna be more than eight kilos when you're finished and you're trimmed and everything. 
if you throw one kilo, it's probably going to be maybe 950 when it's done. <laughs> uh, so the more clay, the more waste. Um, but of course, you want to limit it as much as you can. And as we talked about in the last video, you can't really, because the first hole is going to be quite narrow, and you can't move all the clay on the wall out in one go. So what I do is I put my hand down and push it out here, and then I'll even it up, push it out and even it up. That way it's going to be in, in small, uh, small increments. When I get deeper down to it, my fingers are just not strong enough to move the clay, so I'll actually use more like a fist in there. So I'm just like pushing it down like this. Now I'm trying to sound so experienced, which I'm not. <laughs> At least not with this size of a ball. I did 10 kilo balls, as I, as I mentioned, but uh, 20 kilo, it's, it does feel a little bit different. But it's also sort of nice because it's not flying around so much. Of course, I could push it out of uh, out of shape, but it's it's very solid, to say the least. <laughs> I don't know yet if I'm going to turn around this pot and trim the foot. I may not. I may. Um, some of you may think it's impossible to turn around a pot like this. It's not. It's difficult, but. If I do, I will show you. Um, so I'm not sure how thick I want to do uh, the, the, the button. The problem I had in the past uh, with really big pots is that we end up having too much clay down here in the bottom, and it just never dries. And you think it's dry and it's not, and then you get cracked. So I don't want to make it too thick, but I probably want to make it uh, a couple of centimeters. Because even if I don't do a foot, that's still good enough for um, for drying out. But I'm not even close. <laughs> and as this uh, clay is already on the softer side, I'm trying not to put uh, too much water on. If you noticed, I haven't actually added any water uh, doing this. And we're still very little. Um, scrap that I, I pulled off. That's good. With a clay ball this big, or even even smaller than this, it's very very difficult to judge uh, how much, um, how deep the the, 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 the button is. Um, so I'm definitely gonna do, I'm definitely gonna use, um, need to use a potter's wheel, a potter's needle, need, needle. <laughs> something like this. And basically, you know, poke it in there, put your finger, take it up, and now it's a little too much. It's maybe three, four centimeters. I want it to be a little less than that. So right now, I'm just working on on expanding um, the wall down here and um, evening out, even out the wall. Definitely getting there, slowly, <laughs> but steadily, step by step. So now by pushing in my fingers, I actually create this uh, bubble of clay that I can pull up, sort of like you would do on the outside. But in this case, with this much clay, uh, I need to start uh, from the inside. So I'm actually sort of doing this um, inside pulling. This is a lot of work. Even though we technically haven't been doing any pulling yet, um, still gaining height because I'm trying to expand um, the inside of the button and uh, trying to redistribute that clay up through the pot. So at this point we are at about 30 centimeter, 31 centimeter, and we started out at 22, 23 something. 
So we are, we've gained eight centimeters or something. It's not a lot. We're still gonna redistribute and pull a lot more. The walls are still like super, super thick. They don't, they don't have to be that thick, but still it's a, it's a process. And right now, I think my biggest chance is to expand the foot because inside it's about this, this wide. And outside, of course, it's <laughs> three times that width. Uh, so the wall down here is crazy thick and that needs to be a lot th thinner. And to do that, I need to push out uh, the corner down here. And, and that takes a lot of strength, <laughs> I realized. Um, but as long as I don't push it out of shape, I can keep pushing it. The important thing here now is that I'm doing everything I can to keep it um, centered and leveled. Uh, so the rim is still compressed. The whole pot is still uh, pretty well centered. And, uh, and, and so there's a limit to how much I can pressure it. Now I'm getting uh, close to the to the internal side of the bottom that that I'm looking for. It's now, yeah, well, it's hard to show, but but I think it's like maybe 15 centimeters or something, and that's not that's not too far away from what I want. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now I just need I need to narrow um, the outside a little bit, and I need to try and uh, squeeze some of that up through the pot. Something like this. I can still, the corner down here, there's still a bit too much clay. And of course the walls, depending on how much I want to cave them, but carve them, <laughs> um, I still need to make them a bit thinner. Also, I was actually hoping to, um, to pull a bit more height. Of course the walls are going to be thinner when I pull more height on this. I make the top more narrow, which I think I will. Um, but I think I should be able to pull some more out of it. But let's see what we have now. We have uh, 33, 34 centimeters. It is still far from as tall as I would have liked it to be. But it's beginning to get a nice shape, and I will narrow in uh, the neck a little bit, and that will uh, make it easier to make it taller. And I will also try and see if I can pull a little bit more from down here. It is on the thick side, but right now I need a break. And as I said before, um, it's actually not a problem because there's so much clay here that um, it can easily rest for a few hours. It um, it don't matter. I could even leave it for tomorrow and I could keep throwing. And in fact, it's going to make things a little bit easier. But the good thing is, I made it this far and it's still centered and the top is almost perfectly in, um, in level. So I'm good fit for the next step. Last thing I will do before my break is, I'm just going to make sure that there's no excess water on the inside because I definitely don't want any more water to soak into the clay. Quite the opposite. I want it to, to dry out just a little bit. So um, I'm going to remove that on the inside. I think actually I'm just going to take a rip and just uh, rip it a little bit. Yeah, that was a little bit of slip. It wasn't too bad. I'm going to do the same on the outside. So, just getting rid of that uh, slip. Now, I'm gonna take a break. But I'm gonna let it spin. Because even though there's no draft in, in, in this room, you never know. So by spinning it, it will, uh, it will slowly dry um, uh, the same uh, all over the sides. Good morning. <laughs> I decided to cover up the pot and uh, continue today. It was just so much work. 
uh, dealing with this big clay ball that uh, I finally just felt too tired to continue. And uh, so I put this uh, piece of uh, newspaper on the top, not to distort the, the rim, and covered up with plastic. So uh, now I'm ready to do the last uh, part of the shaving. Yesterday, I was kind of struggling a bit uh, with pulling up enough clay and getting enough height out of this uh, big chunk of clay. And uh, I was initially aiming for a vase, big floor vase type of uh, shape. But then uh, my wonderful girlfriend came by and said, no, that should be a big flower pot. So something like this instead. And I realized we actually need one. So um, I'm thinking now that I will reshape this. It will be very easy. I just need to expand the walls and make it um, shaped sort of like this. And it will be perfect for, uh, we have some big um, palm tree-like indoor flowers that uh, plants that uh, this will be perfect for. I'll still do some, um, some carving on the sides um, because the walls are still kind of thick. And I still need to uh, expand the inside button a little bit so um, I can get it a little less thick or a little bit thinner down here. Me also cut away a little bit because I want the, the foot and the side to be almost equal uh, sizes. That's going to reduce the risk of um, any cracking. So uh, let's get on with that. I will be checking um, how thick the bottom is because this is... Um, almost the last chance to, to uh, make it a little bit thinner. Yeah. It definitely still is on the thick side, so I'll see if I can, um, I can make it a little bit thinner. It's getting better. The good thing is that now it also gets super uh, compressed, which is good. Yeah, I still think it's a bit on, a, on, the, on the thick side, so... Just gonna push up some of that clay that I now pushed out to the sides. Try and even the wall a little bit more. So that way, yeah, it looks, it's looking much better now. Just still want to make sure that it's um, completely centered. Let me just check again. Yeah, and are we getting? Now we're getting closer, it's about a couple of centimeters now, so it could still be a little bit thinner. Yeah, now we're getting there. It's about one and a half centimeter, and I think that's, that's good. Now I'll just even it out a little bit with the brim. Now we still need to move a little bit, um, a little bit of the corner. Um, still, let me see. Yeah, it's still a little bit too much down here in this corner. Um, so it's going to take some pressure. Going to try and move that up. So, 
does take a lot of strength to move all this clay, but it's actually moving pretty well. So, um, it's actually in a funny way much easier to deal with today. I think uh, it helped um, that the clay sort of uh, settled a little bit. And now that we're not looking for super much high, I can still you know, compress the rim down a little bit and then, because I still want to keep that thick. Now the button is, uh, the inside is nice and uh, flat and compressed. <laughs> So um, now I can finish the shaping of the wall. The corner down here now is actually pretty good. Um, just don't push a little bit of that up. So now I'm actually going to push down the, the rim just a little bit because I was aiming for a base before. And so I slimmed it out too much. Um, but now we're going to expand the top and I still want a good fat uh, rim for, um, for the flower pot. I can compress this, which is good. Um, so now we get a little more clay in the top. I'm slowly beginning to get more of that flower pot um, shape to it. I still wanted to go out a little bit more. First I want to see if I can fix the shape of this top. I'm sort of still moving a little bit of clay from below up and um, at the same time shaping it. Still wanted to move out a little bit more, but not so much actually. Yeah, it's beginning to look good. Sometimes for these really big uh, surfaces, um, industrial <laughs> tools like this um, can be very useful and there's a nice grip to it. And also by using the rip, I don't need to add more water and make it weaker. So we're getting very, very close to the shape I wanted. I don't think it needs to be much wider up here. I do think that it's a little thinner here and a little too thick here. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can, I can somehow push this in a little bit.
So, I think we're getting very close now. Uh, I got a nice, um, nice top here. And um, I think I'm just gonna rip the inside a little bit, although you probably won't see much of that, but still for my own aesthetic feel. <laughs> Now the tricky question is, when do you stop? I think I'm very, very close. Um, because at some point, when you do more, you destroy what you have. <laughs> so, I think it's actually surprisingly even. Um, very very little wobbling now, um, and and that's that's a surprise, <laughs> positive surprise. So I finished. I still need to um, adjust the shaping a little bit with the trimming. I'm probably still going to do some, some carving uh, to give it more of a unique look. Um, but on the good side, I managed to throw 20 kilo, almost 20 kilo of clay into something that's useful. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but I still think it turned out okay. I will um, let it sit some hours. Um, so just let it sit a little bit and uh, maybe I will blow dry a little bit and then um, finally I will do the carving and uh, finishing up. But um, we won't have time for, um, for that in this video. It's already been a very long video. So um, I hope you enjoyed this um, experiment and it didn't get as embarrassing as it could have gone. <laughs> so uh, what did I learn from this? Well. One thing I learned is that it is a lot of work to throw a lot of clay. Uh, as I said, I've only been doing 10 kilo before, and this is almost 20 kilo. It's not twice as difficult, but it is difficult. But I also learned that it is indeed doable. And this was my first time with that much clay. I think I can do it a little bit faster next time. But the question is, is this the right way to do this much clay? And I would say now that I'm doing this, uh, this uh, flower pot shape, it's definitely a good way to do it. Because I think doing sectional throwing is very difficult when, you, when, you, when it becomes very wide. Because it's very difficult to fit them. But for a tall vase, um, where you want to pull more height, I still think that sectional throwing is both faster and easier. So uh, maybe next week or the week after, we will uh, revisit the sectional throwing and I'll show you how you can do that and actually get much more high out of the same amount of clay doing that. So I hope you enjoyed it um, and all my struggle. <laughs> and um, if you have a comment or anything, just put it below. And if you want to support my channel, please subscribe, uh, like, share, and uh, I hope to see you soon again. Next week, next Sunday, is a new video. Thank you.